Hi everyone, welcome. This is Amore from Margit Minor Estates and today I've got Johan Miller from Slaman de Jager with us. Hi Johan. Hi Amore, thank you very much for the, uh, for the invite. Um, uh, just a little bit of a background of, uh, of our company. Um, we're quite a well established uh, law firm in Pretoria, Midrand area. Um, we've been established in, in 1938, so we've been in the country for quite some time. And predominantly, we uh, specialize in property law um, and commercial law. So um, that is basically our forte. And we've got three different branches, one in Ferry Glen, one in Centurion, and one in Midstream as well. So we try and obviously uh, create a bigger footprint to serve uh, the, the larger community of our clientele. Great. Thank you, Johan. Yes. Um, the few questions that I've uh, received, especially with us um, renting properties, is there's a lot of questions regarding tenants and lessors and what is my right as a tenant? And um, seeing that we are in unprecedented times, I thought I'll get you on and just get some advice from um, legal aspect um, regarding COVID-19 and me as a tenant, what is my right as a tenant? And I still pay my rental at the end of the month if I've got a loss in income due to COVID. Amara, yes, that's um, a very actual question at this current stage. And obviously we've been inundated with calls in this specific regard, especially yeah. from distressed tenants who are currently experiencing financial difficulties per se. Maybe I can just take one step back and tell you what defense the tenants are frequently raising at this current stage. And it's got many jackets. It's basically called vis maior now. Vis maior is also known as force majeure or supervening impossibility, or, you know, more bluntly described as being acts of God. Mm -hmm. um, and it basically arrives from a Latin concept, which means it's a supervening force or a superior force which basically causes disruption or damage um, in the specific contractual relationship that parties have with one another. So what it basically boils down to is, is that lessees are saying that due to these COVID circumstances, we are absolutely in a position where it's impossible for us to mm. perform. And this lack of performance or impossibility of performance is not due to the action or omission of the parties itself, but due to this super superior uh, force which causes the disruption and the damage. Now, that said, um, in our law, there is definitely a well-enshrined concept of claiming damages or a rental remission, to put it that way, in the event of a supervening impossibility or a vis minor. So it's not an uncommon phenomenon that people would say, I haven't got access or use of the property for the purpose that I've rented it, and therefore I'm entitled to some sorts of a rental remission because it's not my responsibility or my fault. Now, this can be the case in the event of commercial properties because in those instances, people are totally locked out. I mean, I always use the example of people who've got a shop in Mainland Shopping Center, for example. I mean, mm. there's just no ways that he can occupy the premises or use it for the purpose. But one of the requirements, if you want to cease in paying your rentals or want a rental remission would obviously be that you would have to prove that your loss of beneficial occupation is a direct result of the this mild or the COVID-19 circumstance, which I believe residential tenants are very difficultly going to be able to prove. Mm. Because on the contrary, when I rent a property for residential purposes, I am in lockdown in that specific premises. So I actually have got full beneficial use of the property as a uh, opposed to a commercial property where I just cannot trade. Mm. So I believe that that biggest requirement being the causal relationship between a loss of occupation and um, the specific uh, vis maior will not be present in the event of residential properties. Now, that said, many of the lessors have already come to the party and obviously proposed certain 
ten, tenant, uh, um, I wouldn't say rescue packages, but obviously mm. assistance in that regard. And that can either be that the deposit of parties be partially utilized um, to, to perform and obviously to meet their monthly rental requirements. And then a schedule has to be entered into between the parties as to how catch up is going to be played to replenish your deposit again. And then secondly, what you can also do is, is there are agreements in terms of which uh, lessors defer payments. So in other words, if I cannot pay my monthly rental, the rental can be deferred um, or the portion that I cannot afford can be capitalized and deferred and then obviously catch up can be played again to to catch those specific payments up when we've got a recovery date in future. But to answer your question, I don't think there's a legal right in terms of which a residential tenant can claim a remission, especially where he's in possession of the property itself. But I mean that there are people who do not earn an income in these uh, unprecedented times is so. And, you know, I think negotiation is the key aspect in this regard. Mm. And communication, you know, because if you are in communication um, with the lessee and the lessor with each other, then you can have a workable plan. And I think we as South Africans really are, we always say we've got a plan, let's make a plan. So I think Definitely. if you are in communication with each other, then you can find a viable answer to this. Yeah, correct. And, and obviously also bearing in mind that um, you know, a, an uncooperative lessor um, at this current stage doesn't have a lot of remedies to his possession. Yes. You know, every current governmental organization, with the exception of the essential workers, are in lockdown. Yes. So, you know, that includes our courts. So, unfortunately, there is very little one can do against the defaulting tenant at this current stage. So if you do not want to accommodate the tenant at this stage by means of communication and a possible uh, working relationship to see whether one another can accommodate one, uh, uh, your tenant, then you can obviously go the route of enforcing the contract. You can place a party on terms and you can even cancel the agreement at the end of the day. Mm. But your further steps against the tenant would be really limited. I mean, we've got a situation where uh, you would not be able to issue summons against your defaulting tenant um, for a rental arrears because the court just doesn't entertain new cases at this current stage. Mm. So that is an equal dilemma that the specific uh, lessor uh, will experience. You know, so they're basically forced to come to the negotiation table and sit around the table and negotiate with the tenant if you don't want to wait until the lockdown period is uplifted and you have to institute legal action against your team. Mm. Yeah, because that ties to the second question that I had and what is my rights as a lesser? Um, can I evict the tenant? And you just answered that as well. So yeah. um, just um, to summarize what you said is if you can only claim act of God, if you did not have full access to the property, but because you as a tenant have full access to the property, you are still liable for your rent and to pay it. You just have to, if you cannot pay it, then you have to make an agreement to catch up that payments. That's 100% correct. Um, I think, like I said, and to summarize, the, the causal relationship between the loss of beneficial occupation and the vis maior or the act of God in that specific instance is imperative. You have to show that causal relationship. And I think the biggest loophole in residential properties is that there is not a loss of beneficial occupation. I mean, yes. under lockdown, I'm, I'm actually staying put in the property and I've got full right of enjoyment. Just to add lastly to your um, question with regards to eviction, Obviously, due to the fact that the courts are in lockdown at this current stage, we do have a similar problem with application for evictions. A lot of the commercial role players have indicated that they will not apply, even if they can apply to court for evictions for a period of at least two months. Mm. But um, at this current stage, you will in any event not be able to bring an application for eviction for the pure and simple reason it's a court application and the courts are in the lockdown mm. at the current stage. Yes. 
Okay, great. Johan, um, I really thank you for your time and um, that you helped us with a lot of the questions. And I think um, issues that are real um, issues and concerns of the, um, the tenants and the leases. So thank you for your time and we really appreciate it. My pleasure. Keep well. Thanks. Bye-bye.